good friend of mine, um, Austin James Hunt. Um, for reference, please give him a round of applause. For me. <laughs> Um, so, for reference, ladies, um, <laughs> this is Austin's piece here entitled uh, Portrait of a Modern Man. Um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe again, I would like to start with your experience uh, being a Dallas based artist and kind of your practice. You know, when I met you, you showed me your studio, and I had a shared studio space in South Dallas. We were kind of in the midst of this kind of like uh, very sporadic and kind of DIY space, which I think was a very like, I wouldn't say formidable, but like engaging and, you know, energizing time for me personally. Uh, and when I met you, you know, I, I think your, your work immediately striked me as something that was, speaking on something that was very familiar to me. Um, but again, mate, how does that experience being in Dallas and kind of, being here and being from Texas is like, you know, express who, who you are, if that, that makes any sense. I don't know, because in the paintings I'm trying to represent how to, how to access the soul rather than myself and my surroundings. Sure, yeah. Like obviously the surroundings help me go back inside because I was, I've done a bunch of traveling and just try, just I'm a very introspective person. I like being alone. I like having small discussions with people, like very one-on-one. -on -one. I'm very just weird about that. And it's just what I what I sure. Need. Well, I mean, I think frankly, it, it's good to it's good to even say that you know, being in Dallas or being in a city or whatever, you know, that that shouldn't necessarily always be the forefront of what it is that someone does or how they express themselves. Um, I mean, it sort of goes into what I want um, Hagen to be about as well, which is having the spirit of like a, a non-locational kind of sense of being where, you know, you're, you're tapping into, like you're saying, the soul or your spirit. And most of the time, those are very like interpersonal uh, experiences that you have, whether yourself or with people you're in your intimate space. And, you know, Oftentimes, those things can create works that are just completely separate from its environment, which I really enjoy personally. I, I really enjoy creating something that doesn't really have anything to do with the location. It has a lot to do with more so uh, the spirit or the idea or the conceptuality or the technicality behind what it is you're trying to express. Um, I mean, this specific piece reminds me a lot of your earlier work, um, and it's very technical. So maybe you could go into uh, the technical aspect of it, but also maybe a little bit more into um, what exactly you mean about, you know, trying to express the soul or in that nature. Well, for the technical aspects, I mean, it's, you know, it's a lot of planning out before, and it's really kind of annoying to do so. Because I like, I like, I love because I started with photography, and that's what, yeah. that's, that's what brought me to Dallas. Okay. And so I started with photography, came, came here, did that for a long time, travel, blah, blah, blah. God, started painting, didn't know how I really wanted to do it. And then I ended up finding a method of painting that works, and then I like taking ideas as far as I can. Like, I, I chose a square. I, I put the square to the test and just uh, pushed it as far as I can. I mean, I can still go farther. Than sure. That, but yeah, 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 yeah. There's like five squares in between each of these. And now, it's very yeah, is this like a, um, a stencil process or are you creating something in a in beforehand? Like, how exactly? Or you don't have to also, you also don't have to give that away either. <laughs> I mean, that was a bunch of rulers and straight lines. Rulers and straight lines. Okay, okay, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> like I make it on an iPad before, if that helps. That's what I'm saying. Like it's sort of a process of getting the the, the geometry of it first, and then getting it to the practical, which takes your own personal um, technique into in, into account. Um, yeah. So, what about this specific piece? Do you think speaks to you, or would you like to kind of express it? Why why this piece here specifically? I think it just represents where I am in life. 
like it's a it's a it's like a portrait, but it's also these ideas that I've been playing with, like how you see on the background, there's a it's a black to a white, and there becomes this like grid that comes out. Or in the in the opposite, I love playing with contrast. It's I don't sure. know why I've always been this way. Love contrast and duality is a big part of like our language. So I really wanted to play with that as well. And then I just did this, and it really. I never knew what it was about until I talked about it here. Really? really? Enough. Like, okay. There's times when I just, I don't know. Sure. Like, I just yeah, make yeah, things yeah. that I have to make this because it's, if it stays in my head, I will become depressed. <laughs> and I have to just keep making it. You have to get it out. Mm -hmm. You have, it's have an to emotional get emotional expression it's, that you have to just kind of keep doing. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. Um, how, how would you say it? it you know, it fits or doesn't fit within your other body of work. Like, do you? Well, I mean, I only have two, like, paintings with a figure. Kind sure, because a lot of your other works are more geometric, geometric large scale, and yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is smaller than what I usually do. It is, it yeah. Would usually be about seventy-two <coughs> by seventy-two mm -hmm. inches. But yeah, I mean, I I took this photograph honestly of one of my good friends and I wanted to do like homage to him because sure. he's really inspired me because when I was making the early series of this work it's all about music and he's also a musician so it really plays a part he would tell me about things about music that helped drive like me and helped make the paintings beautiful and then yeah. I also it to me I see like there's a bunch of vibration from it. There's a lot of movement yeah. without having to have someone there. Like it's just a silhouette of a person. It's not there's no eyes in it, there's no there's nothing that I just wanted it to feel real and to feel like either someone's watching you from like around the room, like figurative paintings, that's how you the the realness is what people look for. Sure. And in an abstract work they want life. Yeah. And so that's what I think I accomplished here because it does it does enough for me and then when I ask people about the work it does a very similar thing. Like again, there's things that I didn't intend to create with this. Like again, the lines that come through all the corners, like that is only because the colors work together. It's not yes. but then it's weird because it goes into like free will and how I don't believe it. So you don't believe in free will? No. No. So do you think you did that um, based off of your own sense of, uh, auto not autonomy, but a like feeling more of more subconscious? Mm -hmm. Which I think that's, it's, you can feel that in the piece. You know what I mean? You can feel a sense of, even like what you said, it's like, you know, you're, you're expressing yourself from this need of almost unwillingly, like you have to do this, like you have to, to express yourself this way. This is where I, I, I don't believe that there is no free will, but I will also entertain the idea in the sense that a lot of creative people, or when you have a creative um, inclination or, or desire, it does feel like it's coming from this place of like, I have to do this. Like I, there is no question about expressing myself in this way. Um, and I think you, that from your work, you can feel that. You know what I mean? And that's one reason why I very appreciate your work, um, and I appreciate you being honest about that because, I mean, it just sparks up the more philosophical question of why we are creating in general or why we're even engaging in these kinds of, um, you know, conversations because, you know, again, sometimes even finding myself here, it's like I feel like I've just sort of, you know, became myself and, you know, the interest that I have and, you know, the, the literature that I've read and the people that I've, you know, put myself around has sort of um, got me to this point of um, feeling like I want to express not only my internal, you know, expression, but also see how I can extend that within you and within everybody else. Um, and I will be honest, I'm very happy to be here with you because, again, um, me and Austin have been friends for a while now. I have a really good relationship with him. And, um, it just means a lot for, for you to be here. Because we've had 
countless conversations about and the same the about, free will. And about free will and the things that he did and then I'm like oh my gosh but that sort of that's why it brings me joy because I'm having this conversation in the midst of you guys it's like it's just very um, fulfilling for me um, so I really appreciate you you know being here and expressing that to, to everybody I appreciate um, you making this happen yeah, yeah man yeah for sure um, does anybody have any questions for Austin? Oh, <laughs> So you talked a lot about it's very emotive work, but it's also very technical. Do you find when you finish a piece, you use it as sort of like a litmus test of how you were feeling during it? Does that change over time as you've worked with the piece for longer? How do your emotions tie with the piece for when it's made and how it's Well, when I'm making it, it's more so, again, like, an emotional release that I don't know that I'm needing to do. Mm -hmm. But then I look at it late. I'll look at pieces months later, and then I'll actually figure out what they mean. Because mm -hmm. it's sometimes you just, as much as I wish that I could know exactly what it means, I need I need a discussion around it. I need to talk about it or to even just examine <coughs> it for hours and hours. Because I remember I just stared at this one for hours and hours because it. It was staring back at me, so I'm trying to <laughs> understand this like subject object orientation. Is it like real? Is this more real than real? It's just, and I, it proposes so many questions that I really don't even know how to answer. And the, it's just, that's what I enjoy about it because it's engaging. It's not just like a, a flat piece of art in my, yeah. in my eyes. But it it's more easy, it has and it's. I don't know, it's like they light something away where yeah. I'm like, oh, I need to I need to put attention there. Sure, sure, sure. Nathan, do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, when you dove into your subconscious, what did you experience while you were making this? I don't remember. It was a while ago, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but when I look back at it now, it's like that I can it's it's really nice that I can figure out like I, I'm truly trying to get I'm trying to narrow down what it is right and then again I can figure out that I wanted to try and touch the soul like I've never even believed in a soul I never believed in God and then I started believing in God and then I believed in you know that we have souls so that that's an, another just interesting aspect and then it's just very there's there's weird parallels in it that is that's even hard for me to talk about. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. Yana. Yeah. So you said you do a lot of geometric work and don't often put like organic forms that you said like or or people in it. Mm -hmm. Um, it, like how many pieces have you incorporated like organic shapes and curves into, and what inspired you? to put in a way that you figure into your work with this specifically? Let's see. I've done about... I've done about four organic type of shapes, but then for more figurative... I don't know if I'd even call this a figurative piece. I've done two. I tried to do three, but it's ended up ripped twice. <laughs> oh, no. Because I've tried to make it one side and it was too small. Because it's just, it's a lot to handle trying to do that much work in a very small mm -hmm. form factor. Yeah. And then, what was your second question? Yeah, I was wondering, like, what inspired you to do this figure for, for this piece? Uh, so, as I mentioned earlier, I've, I've been a photographer for a long time and I took this photograph of my friend working on his album cover. And there was something about the photograph that I just needed to put it something like it there was something in it that I could tell that there there was it there, you know what I'm saying? There was yeah. it and I wanted to also put that in a paint like I just wanted to see what it would look like. And then yeah. it just happened to be really nice for me. Because I was like, oh I could just do because uh, again, I'm not going to play with the opposites. I could just, I can make it, you know, from black to white again on him, but it just didn't look right, so I needed to flip it, and it just became right. It's something like I needed to do. Beautiful marriage, like, mixing the organic shapes with the geometry. Thank you. 
Thank you. It's kind of, and it goes again with the, the it's, it's called the, there's a Latin term called coincidentia positorum, which is the union of the opposites. <laughs> and that's, again, what I'm looking to do. Coincidentia appositorum. You don't have to Uh, well, COVID happened. 
happened and I realized that I didn't like working with people. Because <laughs> I, I, I worked with people doing fashion photography and things like that. And it just was like, I love collaborating, but I hated working with some of the people that I was working with and it tainted my view even of photography. So I stopped and I was like, let me focus on color. And weirdly enough, I went back to black and white because again, I, I color's great, but then it just, there's some things where it just, you don't need color. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then I went back and I realized, I just, I, so I, I tried to do, tried to do color studies. And then I just realized that that just wasn't what I wanted to do. And then I just kept, and then I found a way to marry photography. Cause I was like, hmm, how can I, cause I've done this for, and plus ten, about 10 years now, how do I incorporate photography into my work? So if I want to make a transition, it's more seamless. Because it's, it's, it's weird for people to see you go from a painter or a photographer to a painter to a, like an animator or this or that. And people, a lot of them associate you with one thing. And I really hated being just associated with like a photographer or a painter. And that, so I'm trying to break, also break that boundary. Any other questions? I do. Um, so I noticed, or as I'm looking at it, it's uh, that marriage of uh, opposites um, mm -hmm. and subconscious versus conscious. Um, and what one thing I find really interesting is they're made of the same thing. Mm -hmm. The self is enlarged. And then, you know, I understand the no free will argument. Um, I think there's a really good argument for that. But then, or, and not to get too much into that, but uh, because <laughs> that's I a can, long discussion. <laughs> I, can, I can flow with it. I can, I can understand that. Um, and I, I'll tie it in. It's like, but you know, as do we when we're looking at ourselves have to you know enlarge our self, our opinion when we're made of the same thing as everything else. And you've got this yin yang energy. Uh, it's a very, is the ultimate question. Is there a reason, was it intentional, uh, accidental, or subconscious, the, the shapes, the inverted shapes inside are larger? Uh, was that, did that just, <coughs> oh, was that just how it turned out? Did I miss? Uh, I guess he's asking the, the squares in the, in the portrait, they being larger. Than the other ones, or is that intentional? It was intentional because I wanted, I didn't want it to get muddy. Mm -hmm. Because if they were the same size, you may not get enough, like, yes, they have enough contrast, but I just, I didn't think it would hit right. <laughs> it just, it just, to me, it just needed to be a little yeah, bit yeah. larger so you could just tell that. <laughs> it was just. No, yeah, no, I, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also feel like the fact that the squares are larger, they're closer to you. So you're closer sure. to the subject. Oh, interesting. And, yeah. and that's interesting because a lot of people have uh, talked about how when they look at like this, this type of work of mine, that the white background of black squares makes it feel more introspective, and then the opposite way is more, uh, what's the other word? <laughs> Extra uh, Extroverted. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, any more questions? For Austin. <coughs> All right. Please give a round of applause for Austin. <laughs> um, that is the last talk. Uh, thank you, everybody, for.